Welcome on in, YouTubers. Uh, I'm Sword of Berserk, and I'm going to be showing you how to beat Dark Souls 1 fairly quickly. <laughs> I'm not I'm not the greatest Dark Souls player of all time, but uh, hopefully we can get this done in um, under two hours. That's sort of the goal here. Um, and I'm going to explain exactly how I do it, um, try and go in depth for the choices of items, my pathings, why I chose this character, why I chose certain weapons, um, and also try and go over some of the RNG elements of this particular run. The Hunter class has uh, some key items uh, that are really, really nice to have. So for one, the Hunter comes with uh, a good shield with 100% physical damage blocking, has um, good strength and dexterity, which are gonna be useful for wielding the Black Knight weapons. And uh, this class comes with a bow and arrows, which are gonna be useful for one of the boss fights that we encounter way farther down the line. So we're gonna go ahead and name this the same as the other ones. We're gonna do Tester. It doesn't really matter what sex you choose. I'm gonna go ahead and play a female character, not that that really ma matters. And we're gonna, uh, you can start with any item that you want, as long as it's the master key. So if you wanna go fast in Dark Souls 1, you need to have the master key. It lets you skip so much content that you otherwise would have to do. You get to skip all of some of the worst areas of the game and go directly to the specific bosses that you need to fight. So you can either start any class with the master key, or if you start as the thief, the thief comes with a master key already. So um, just something to keep in mind, but we're gonna start with the hunter. We're gonna start with the master key. This is, all of this is pretty, all of this is fine. None of that really matters as far as gameplay is concerned. Hunter class for the stats and the items that you start with. Master key is your gift so that you can gain access to areas early. And that's really it. Let's get into it. So we're gonna end up in the starter area. And in the starter area, you don't really start with a lot of your starting gear. You have to pick up your starting gear. We're gonna start by picking up the dungeon cell key, opening this door and running on through here. Now you're gonna fight the, we're, we're gonna have a big old demon that's gonna show up to be our first kind of boss fight up here. And we are gonna make our way to a door that opens up as soon as the boss kind of spawns. And we're just gonna avoid fighting the boss until we're able to acquire the gear that he's supposed to drop for us. Oh. You can grab this bonfire if you want. It's a little optional. You shouldn't really die through this section uh, it, as long as you don't try and fight the boss. But we'll open up this door and the boss is gonna spawn right there and we're gonna make our way towards this door that is right over here. So we're not even gonna look at the boss. We're just gonna pop right through this door and it'll shut right behind us. So this is another bonfire, useful for if you think you're going to die, but hopefully we just won't die. So this is an archer, he's gonna shoot at us. We're gonna pick up our shield there. And we're gonna pick up our sword here. So we wanna make sure that we equip our short sword and uh, we can, sorry, we can also equip our shield if we want to, though not, not really necessary. We're gonna go ahead and two-hand our sword as as is the custom. And I'm gonna go ahead and unequip the shield because we don't really need it. So we're gonna go ahead and obtain our SS flash. We're gonna run up here, pop off the ledge here, and that ball is going to rumble through here. We're gonna talk to our friendly knight. We're gonna accept his thing. He's gonna go ahead and give us an SS flask, and he's gonna give us an undead assignment key. And head up here to the top. This fellow uh, is gonna hit us. He hits me every time for whatever reason. I just forget that he 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 attacked you so quickly. Our way through here. Now we want to pick up our bow off of this guy. Very nice. Very very helpful. We just want to clear our pathway through here. And we want to make our way through. Here. So this is where the game sort of teach you that plunge attacks exist. You want to make sure you plunge onto this guy. And then 
this is going to be kind of a soul's trope. You're going to want to hang to the butts of enemies. You should really not have to do very much dodging at all. You can just hang, wait for him to attack, do a little sideways dodge. Very easy. Few hits, and he should be taken care of very easy. It's going to open up this door back here. And we're make our way into the actual game proper. Now, we can come back to this area later on, and we very well might. We, the strategy that I imply utilizes Black Knight weapons as the primary source of damage for a lot of these runs because the Black Knight weapons are incredibly strong. They're easy to upgrade. Um, the only trouble with the Black Knight weapons is that they are indeed drops that you have to guarantee, you have to um, count on RNG in order to get them. We're going to pick up this humanity that's going to be very important for later on. And we're going to make our way up here to collect a couple items. So we can go up these stairs. Make it right here and drop down. So usually a lot of elevators are just going to lead to death, but back here are a bunch of treasure chests with a bunch of really good starting items. Homeward Bones to help you get around a little bit before we get our teleporting active. Morning Star is a nice weapon that has some bleed. Um, it makes makes for a better weapon than a lot of starter weapons, but we're not really going to spend too much time using this, this short sword, so... So you gotta watch out for these skeletons. Um, like a lot of FromSoft games, they put a higher level area right next to the starter area to kind of bait you into going and fighting them. But we are gonna just go ahead and return back to Firelink Shrine proper, sit at this bonfire, and move about our day. We're gonna go down and make our way down even further still until we hit this elevator and then we're going to take the elevator down now this is also heading into an area that we're going to do some more exploring later on not really important for us to do a heavy amount of exploring at the moment but so you can kind of tumble off of here and we're gonna make our way up and to the right here. Now, because we have the master key, this is primarily the reason you want the master key is to be able to unlock this specific door. This is gonna let us bypass quite a bit of stuff because we're going to run around the edge of these cliff sides here and make our way all the way to our friend Andre. We're gonna make a small pit stop to kick a black knight off of a cliff and hopefully he will drop his halberd, and if not, I will show some backup strats. You can grab the items from this guy, but um, the only one worth grabbing is this one right here. There is a shield in the middle, but it will wake him up, and then um, there's a high likelihood that you just get one shot by his poison breath, and that is no point out. So these wyverns shoot lightning, and they have a, a few different attacks. You want to make sure that you kind of dodge and decide if they're charging up their lightning attack. They aren't too bad, but they can be annoying if you end up, with a, you know, end up trying to move in the wrong way. We're going to make our way up kind of to, the, to this building. There's a gap in the castle structure here, and this is an elevator that leads up. Now... It is important to note that we are going to want to have humanity. The more humanity our character has, the more we, uh, the more chance that items drop for us. Also of note, you want to sit at bonfires that you go to. If you don't sit at the bonfire, then they uh, won't lock you won't lock you into that position. You want to run down here and grab this Grass Crest Shield. And you want to kind of go back into this cave because we want to do a little bit of prepare, prep work. 
Now, he's not going to follow us in here, but you want to equip your Grass Crest Shield. And you want to go ahead in your inventory and use all of these humanity that you have. Okay. Alright, so we are going to be doing some blocking. We want to go over here to... So first off, we want to draw his attention, but we want to get to the side here. Are you pissed off at us yet? Beautiful. Alright, awesome. So we want to abuse the side here. We're going to block. Are you afraid of us? So you want to kind of get off to the side here, and you want to see if you can't backstab him when he goes to swipe you. Now, you want to kind of position yourself to the edge here. He's going to try and do that. There you go. Backstab, kick him off the ledge. So unfortunately, he did not drop his Black Knight Halberd, but that is A-OK. -okay. So that, that knight has a chance to drop his Black Knight Halberd. If he does so, it's incredibly useful. But since he didn't drop his Black Knight Halberd, it's totally fine. Um, I'm also going to just strip off all these clothing. We don't actually need any of the any of the armor for any purposes. It's much more beneficial to have the really fast dodge roll than it is to have the armor. So I'm just going to go naked for a little while here. We're going to make our way up this kind of ledge, and we're going to make our way to Andre. There is one pit stop that we need to make, and it's for this crystal lizard. So absolutely want to kill this crystal lizard. We do not want this crystal lizard escaping from us. Very important that you continue to attack it so that it doesn't teleport off. And that twinkling titanite that it drops is going to be our upgrade material that we're going to utilize for this run. So something to keep in mind there. Keep our keep running up this pathway. And as soon as we get up to the top, we're kind of going to kind of make a U-turn. Gonna get right here. As soon as we hit the water, we're gonna make sort of a U-turn and run back this way. And you can usually just run past the tree guys. They don't usually hit you. Now this is the guy that might give you a little bit of trouble. This is uh, a Titanite demon. Um, and you wanna kind of stay out of his line of sight because he shoots that lightning bolt at you. And if you kind of rotate with his spin, he's usually not too much of a problem, but uh, just just a guy to keep in mind that he can be a little bit troublesome. Well. So this is Andre of Astora, and he sells Titanite shards uh, for 800, but he also sells a number of other items that we're gonna grab over the course of our journey. We're gonna grab the battle axe though. Go get yourself. And that is going to be our weapon that we're going to make some use of here. Um, the Battle Axe is a really awesome weapon for early in the game. It does a lot of damage and has a lot of... Uh, it's just very, very powerful, especially for the Thousand Souls investment. It's the best weapon that you can pick up early in the game. Um, we're going to make our way through here and sort of wrap back around into Firelink Shrine. Run up through here. You can kill this guy. I'm going to avoid killing this guy, but I really want this Firekeeper Soul. That's going to let us upgrade our flask so that the flask gives a little bit of additional healing. And we are going to take this elevator and head down. Now, as the elevator is heading down, we are going to tumble off of the ledge in a very specific spot. Right... here. Right before it hits the lower level. Now, why would we do this? Well, right here we can we can tumble off of, and, and right there on that. And that gives us access to this upper area. following it around, there's a nice little nest, and if we curl up like a little ball, hopefully a nice little raven will think that we are supposed to be in here, and it will take us back to the undead asylum that we started the game at. 
Now, we're going back to the Undead Asylum because our Black Knight Halberd did not drop from the Black Knight that we encountered. There are a couple Black Knights that are in the Undead Asylum that we can make use of to get ourselves a very powerful starting weapon. So, blocking is really strong against these fire-wielding guys. They are rather annoying. And so, if you can avoid them, you want to. You also want to avoid being in the middle of this room. You actually kind of want to go off to the right here. And you want to sit at this bonfire to reset the aggro for the enemies and give you a nice warp point right here. Now, we are going to make use of the parry mechanic here. These Black Knights are very formidable, and we are going to be doing some parrying of them. Um, they are rather easy to parry, um, for the most part. going to reset real fast. But after you get kind of the rhythm of what's going on here, they're actually not too bad to fight. They have the same overhand attack with two different kinds of speeds. They have a slow version and a fast version. But as long as you hit the parry button, like, right as they're kind of downward swing, it should be pretty easy to hit them. Unlike in Dark Souls 3, the Grass Crest Shield's actually pretty good for parrying in this game, so... And you do have to parry them a number of times, but the reward at the end is certainly worth it. If you stay kind of close, they're almost always going to do that overhand attack, so you want to stay relatively close to them. And they're, they're taking so little damage, mostly because they have that very heavy armor on. If you manage to make it to their backside, um, you can backstab them as well, uh, just like I did with the other knights, so something to keep in mind. And we got the Black Knight Sword. There's another Black Knight in here, but I'm just going to settle for the Black Knight Sword. Um, one of the cool things about the Black Knight Sword, so all the Black Knight weapons are incredibly heavy, um, but you can go ahead and look here, and you can see what the stat requirements on this weapon is. So it requires 20 strength and 18 dex. So that's our new goal. We're trying to get to 20, well, we're trying to get to like 15 strength or 14 strength and 18 dex. Because you get strength and a half, um, you get strength and a half on your, um, just use these. You get strength and a half when you wield a weapon in two hands, which you're going to need to for this guy, so uh, we're going to go ahead and consume our souls that we've gotten. Level up. So we need 18 dex and 14 strength. So that is exactly how many souls we had. And... Now it will say that we have we can't wield it in one hand, we need to wield it in two hands, which we can. And now we have a very awesome weapon. So before we had a weapon that did not super great damage. Now we have a weapon that does a ton absolute ton of damage. And we can upgrade it a couple times at Andre as well. I think we might be able to upgrade it twice, once or twice, before even the first boss fight. That's one of the reasons why I like this uh, sword as opposed to going with the halberds. Because uh, the sword weighs a lot less and it also has less stat requirements. So overall, it makes it a lot easier to... Um, it makes it a lot easier to build around. But... I cannot deny that the Black Knight Halberd is the superior weapon in terms of just raw damage and making it easily easy to survive with it. So, you want to get up here. 
that key uh, unlocks an area in the asylum that we were just at, but we don't really care about the key so much. We want to kind of just get down off the top here and back to Firelink Shrine proper. All right, so we're going to head back to Firelink Shrine here so that we can refresh on our 10 Estus flasks. And we're going to make our way to our first boss. Also, we're going to kill this gentleman. By the lords! You damn... Oh. oh, you're designing a character for your book? That's cool. He drops two humanity and a thousand souls, which we will happily take. Cool, awesome. How is that coming along? I am recording a video on how to beat Dark Souls 1 uh, fairly quickly. Though we did not get lucky with our weapon drop and we did have to settle for Black Knight, uh, Black Knight Sword instead, but we figured out. Alright, I'm gonna go talk to Andre real fast and upgrade this weapon. So the Twinkling Titanite that we picked up earlier, uh, we're going to utilize with Andre here to upgrade our weapon twice. Force weapon, Black Knight Sword. You can see Twinkling Titanite requires 2,000 souls. So unfortunately we can only upgrade it once for now, but um, we are... We are if we killed like one more thing, maybe we could we could upgrade it again, but we are gonna be plenty powerful for the first boss of the game here. So let us go fight gargoyles. Now gargoyles are an interesting fight. Oh hi. Gargoyles are an interesting fight. They they will divide your attention and um, they kind of fake you out because they're, it is a double boss fight. Even though it only looks like a singular boss fight at, at first. Oh, shit. Oh, no. That's not good. All right. Now that we've navigated that hallway properly... <laughs> Block. Oh. oh my goodness. Alright, we're gonna try that again. This time with the feeling. Now this hallway of guys, uh, it is it is not too difficult to run through them all. You can see this gentleman running through here. As long as he doesn't clog the door up, you're totally fine. You kind of want to stand a little bit far from the doorway so that he has in he's incentivized with his aggro to come towards you, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. All right. So two attacks from this weapon will stagger the gargoyle. As you can see, oh, wow. oh, why am I so slow? Why am I so slow? It's like all my act. It's like I was stuck in a pool of molasses. All right. Uh, there's also a tail cut that you can do that will do extra damage to this boss. Honestly, this boss is easier to fight unlocked. And you can see three hits kills this gargoyle. This gargoyle spawns at half HP, so... It doesn't have a tail, so... Very easy with the Black Knight Albert. Or very easy with the Black Knight Sword. Oh, where, where am I? I definitely need to go pick up these souls. What 
is going on? I don't know. I don't know why uh, why it keeps freezing a little bit, but that's all good. So now that we've uh, now that we've kind of climbed this whole thing up here, we're gonna ring this bell of awakening. We also have a gentleman that we need to murder. So we're gonna make our way down. Uh, it's very important not to accidentally fall. Um, you can slide down these ladders by holding the B button or the circle button if you're on a PlayStation. Um, makes traversing those ladders a lot easier to do so. If you didn't go and grab those homeward bones, now's a good time to pick up homeward bones. Uh, but we are going to kill this gentleman. It is only human to made thyself And thou leavest me with joy. Alright. So we want to kill him for the humanity that he has as well. And we want to homeward bone. This is gonna take us back to Firelink Shrine. Um just makes it makes it easy. Alright. So level up. We want to get to 20 strength. Um that is where we kind of want to get, and then we can add on some survivability stats. But getting to 20 strength lets us one-hand the weapon, so we don't have to worry about having to two-hand the sword all the time. But we are going to want to put a fair bit of strength into the weapon, because that is, that is what it scales off of. Now, we need to make our way... Um, we need to make our way completely opposite direction that I just ran here. We want to go... <laughs> sort of back the way that we came earlier. So, now that we have taken care of gargoyles and we are back at Firelink Shrine, we want to go back down to New Londo. Oh, I almost forgot. Reminded myself. So, this right here is Firekeeper. You can give her the Firekeeper soul we picked up earlier to reinforce our Estus Flask to give us a little bit more healing. Uh, but this general right, this gentleman right here is not a gentleman at all. If we leave him to his own devices, he's going to kill our beloved Firekeeper. Um, so we are going to do a simple action where you push forward on the D-pad at the same time you hit the attack button. And instead of doing a punch, you're going to do a kick. Okay. So we are going to kick him and kick him again. Oh, not punch him. Not punch him kick him and he's going to take a bit of a spill as soon as he dies you want to quit out of the game and reload and once you've quit out and reload the items that he has on his body are going to be right here that'll give you five humanity and the ring of favor and protection now the ring of favor and protection is quite an awesome item it boosts HP, it boosts stamina, and it boosts your uh, load, which all are awesome, especially at the beginning of the game. The trick is that if you take it off, the ring breaks, and you can't wear it anymore. So, very important that once you equip the ring, you never take it off. You can see it's a pretty substantial amount of HP, pretty substantial amount of stamina, and it's definitely going to help us with uh, this heavy weapon, so that way we can eventually wear some armor. Now, we want to get this elevator to come back up. Go ahead and top ourselves off here. And we're going to make our way to the next boss fight. Uh, now, the next boss fight, if you're if you're fighting with like a normal weapon, like a, an axe or a sword or something like that, she can be pretty difficult to do. Uh, but if you have a Black Knight weapon like this, um, and you're dealing a couple hundred damage or swing, she's not as bad. And we're going to go up, just like we did the last time we came down here. Except instead of going left and heading towards Andre, we're going to go right. Now this is the way you would normally come out of this area after the first time you've gone. But since we are, uh, since we started with the master key, we have the ability to, to kind of go in the, the back way. This is your poison swamp area. 
you're gonna make your way over here to this ladder and we're gonna make our way down this uh, this area as much as we can um, some of these platforms you can easily drop off of not too big of a deal um, but we want to make sure that we avoid these guys that have uh, we want to make sure that we avoid these guys that have poison darts. Once we made it down to this water wheel here, oh, bonus experience, nice. We're just going to walk off the ledge here, and walk off the ledge here, and we're going to want to kind of like run and jump over here, because we're eventually we're going to want to make it over here. We're going to get poisoned, that's just going to happen, um, just kind of understand that's going to happen, this area kind of sucks in that regards. But you want to stick to the side here. There are a bunch of gentlemen over there with boulders. They are mean. They will throw those boulders at you. And we want to make our way into this kind of webbed cocoon thing with um, all these spikes. And apparently we're bringing this demon with us. So I hope you enjoy this this demon because he wanted to tag along. So the next boss is Quaylog. We're going to make our way in here and down you definitely do not want to kill these guys as they have a tendency to explode into uh, a bunch of little serpent things poison lasts a long time and it's just something that you're going to want to keep an eye on when you get poisoned Quaylog is all about making sure you are managing the uh, uh, the arena. Oh, shit. She has a few different moves. When she leans down to talk to like her spider head, you want to make sure that you get far away from her. You can see that she puts a lot of lava on the ground. Poison really, uh, really, really putting us in a pinch there, but as long as you don't get poisoned, she's usually not too bad. So typically she will rotate between doing, um, doing her sword attacks with doing the spider spitting attacks. when you've got to be extra vigilant about the uh, about the flaming areas because that's where she gets you is when you get cornered in the fire just take her nice and slow watch what she does when she does the when she does the the sword the sword swings you want to stay really close to her when she leans in and like talks to her spider, that's when you want to back away. She'll do her explosion. And other than those two things, uh, positioning wise, everything else is very heavily. I mean, everything is very heavily telegraphed with her. So once you recognize those two things and where you need to stand for them, it's a very, very simple boss fight. So hitting that button rings another bell of awakening. And while we could go back to Firelink Shrine, instead we are going to come down here and grab um, a bonfire so you c usually the path is to go down that way but there is a secret wall right here and there is a very important bonfire here that it's going to let us teleport now you want you want to tell this guy yes 
If you tell him no, you'll have to kill him. And it's just much simpler to tell him yes. This is Quaylog's sister, who is another spider, but this... She is less hostile than her sister. But the main thing is you want this bomb. Um, this is also a good opportunity to um, use the soul of Quaylog and any other souls that you might have if you want to use them. And resting at this bonfire, you can level up. You can give yourself more strength. We typically want to get to at least 30 strength uh, at some point here. But but for now, uh, we're actually going to fight the next boss with our bare hands. I'm going to unequip our big old sword, and we're going to run out of that room and to the right down here. We're not going to bother to pick up this bonfire that is down here because in all honesty, we don't need it. We won't We won't sit at it. We won't touch it. Um, it's only going to make, make the run take a little longer. We're going to follow this path around and down. There we go. This way. Drop down a little bit. Take a little damage. Whatever make our way across here. Now that lava is real lava. It does really burn and you can see that there's structures down there. We are going to make our way down there eventually but not quite quite yet. First we have to uh, defeat a boss through this fog gate that has one of the worst names that has ever been come up with uh, uh, by FromSoft. From we're gonna we are gonna fight Ceaseless Discharge. Now, why are we going to do a fist attack? Well, this boss is funky. Uh, there's a lava pool down there, but as you can see, there's sort of like a, a ledge to the lava pool. When you start this boss fight, the boss arena is kind of huge because this boss is kind of huge. And the objective is we are going to lure the boss to the front of the arena. It actually is not hostile until you run past it and pick up the armor set that is on the other side of here. So once we grab this armor set, it is going to go ballistic and be very mad at us. So you want to wait until it kind of splashes lava there, and then you want to run like your life depends on it, because it does. This boss has incredibly long arms. We want to make use of this cut through to get as far away from the boss as we possibly can. Now the boss is actually standing in the lava down there. And while typically you're going to wait for it to attack and then punch its hand or whatever to deal damage to it, if you run to the start of the boss arena here and it follows you, eventually it's going to get over here and it's going to do a punch attack you want to punch his hand one two three four five six seven and you can see that even though we only did well you couldn't see with my head in the way we only did 14 damage to the boss he died and that's because he actually moves ever so slightly when you punch him and it's just enough, just enough distance for him to fall off the edge there. And we are rewarded with a homeward bone and a bunch of experience and uh, a humanity. So, there it is. All right. So now that we have done that, this is a good time to speak to this lady, and we are going to go ahead and enter the covenant with her. Now, she doesn't really say a whole lot unless you started with the witch's ring, in which case you'll actually understand what she is saying. But it is important that we join this covenant because it's going to give us the opportunity to give her humanities. We're going to give her four now, and we're going to give her 26 later. Now, why would we give her all of these humanities? Well, if we give her 30 humanities total, it will deepen um, our our investment into uh, the covenant that she is a part of. And by deepening that investment to the covenant, she is going to unlock a door for us that will allow us to skip most of the fire area down below. 
which I can't say that I hate. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to save one of the beloved characters of the series. If you were doing the Solaire quest, it gives you the opportunity to save Solaire. Um, he gets uh, he gets confused once you get to the Ir Irithyll area, the, the fire area, and he's searching for a light. And there is a bug monster that grabs onto his head and sort of mind controls him. But if you open the door, you kill the bug monster before he gets mind controlled, and it prevents him from being mind controlled. And and if you finish that quest line, he will even be summonable for the final boss if you want to have him summonable, or if you want to summon him for the final boss, which is kind of really cool. The original OG, very friendly, nice, helpful guy. Otherwise, if you don't do that, he goes crazy and attacks you. <laughs> so, Like many of the characters in the Dark Souls series, not everybody has a very happy ending. So essentially, we're going back the way we came. Uh, we need to get back to Andre. And we need to go through an area that is called Sen's Fortress. Now, Sen's Fortress is essentially a big old death trap area. We want to navigate through Sen's Fortress as quickly and as easily as we possibly can. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But first, we've got to make it back there. So we have to make sure that we take the wheel. We have to make sure that we don't, don't fall off. And uh, it's very, impor very important that while it's okay that we get poisoned, we definitely don't want to get toxic. And there's a guy up here that is just around the corner that has a little toxic blow dart gun. We want to make sure that we absolutely positively do not get shot by his toxic darts. And he is trying his, his best to get us. It is important that we move through this area fairly quickly because there are mosquitoes that are chasing after us that are rather annoying. So if we don't make our way up fast enough, they will get us and stop us. Controller cam? Yeah, obviously. Controller cam necessary for instructional video. What's going on, Professor? Hope you're doing well. I did not mean to jump. If you are running and you, like, double tap the roll button, you will jump. But if you let go of the run and single tap, you will roll, so. Doing good? I'm glad you're doing good. So, either way here goes to Andre, but the left path here is a lot safer, and in my opinion, it's a little bit quicker because you get to go up through Firelink Shrine instead of through... Poison Dragon, bunch of drakes up a yeah. It's it's a lot farther to go the other direction. So we're gonna we're gonna take this elevator up, which is one of the reasons why I didn't send it back up earlier. All right, so lots of running, lots of stairs. But we are going to make our way to Sen's Fortress. The ultimate goal of going through Sen's Fortress is for us to kill Iron Golem, which is the boss at the end. Iron Golem is a fairly simple boss. Very tanky, but if you hit it in its legs enough times it will fall over, and if you fight it on the little bridge that is in the boss arena, you can cause it to tumble off to the side. So. We're going to definitely try and make that happen. However, this weapon does quite a bit of damage, so it is very possible that we just kill kill it instead. past all of these friendly fellows, making our way to the Undead Parish. And for now, Andre, Andre lives. Eventually we will kill Andre because we need his humanity, because 
as I as I said, with Quaylog's sister, we need to get to 30 humanities so that we can turn that in so she can open a door for us. Should be pretty easy. Um, he's going to be chilling down there. We don't actually need to go talk to him, but it, you should sit at this bonfire just in case. All right. So I'm going to try and explain how to run through here as easily as I can. But, you know, if you... Walk, if you watch, you can, you're free, feel free to pause, rewind, stop, whatever the video to, to see exactly how to go. Don't hit that pressure plate. It'll shoot a bunch of arrows at you. But once you start running through here, you pretty much don't want to stop. Everything in Sense Fortress is kind of timed. So as soon as this goes, you want to run. Pause, run. So that you sit in the middle of those two. You can run to the right here and just run straight past this. And now we're heading up to the top. You want your shield out so that you can block a lightning bolt from this guy. And you can just kind of walk through here. And when you hit this pressure plate, it will kill that guy. When you get here, it's the funniest part of Dark Souls 1. Boulder. Now there's a little alcove on the left here. Go ahead and dip into the alcove. And the boulders will take care of the rest. Now, running up here, there is a nice ring, because we probably will not be wearing very much armor. The ring of steel protection gives us a lot of defense for very little weight. You just want to make sure that you do not unequip the ring of favor and protection. And you equip this ring of steel protection in addition to it. Traversing the fog here, you run through here and kind of steer to the right. should be very easy to kill this guy in three hits. No. And then as soon as this ball hits the wall here, we're going to run behind it. I'm going to go the long way here. Just, uh, just because going the other way requires a, a quit out. And this is just a little bit easier for a lot of people to do. So we're going to head down here and going through here. Now, if you wait for enough balls to go through here, it will fill up that little crevice there and it will blast that door or blast that wall open when the fourth one rolls through. And there's a whole area that you can explore that way. Um, this chest here, you want to make sure you don't open it because it is a mimic. I'm just going to go ahead and kill this friendly fellow. Four hits will do it. And when you kill a Mimic, you get the item that's inside of it. So Lightning Spear is a pretty sweet item. This is a trapped lift as well. So you want to make sure that you get on it. You notice that it is bloody and red. When it gets to the top here, you want to make sure you immediately step off of it because it is going to continue up and crush you into those spikes up there. So that's going to be very bad if you stay on there for too, too long. Now, run up and around. And then down here. And up here. And this will let you turn this around, turn this in different directions. If you point it this way, they will just kind of like shoot off into nothing. So um, if you plan on traversing through there, that's a way to do it. Hitting that pressure pad shoots all those arrows. You can wait for all the arrows to shoot without having to worry about getting hit on them. And then you're going to wait for these to kind of go and then run across. You're going to make your way to the left here, and this guy that's up at the top of the steps needs to be hit one time. Does not need to kill him, you just need to hit him one time so you don't get sandwiched. And you want to make sure that this goes across, and just keep running. Keep running. And make your way to the right. Alright, well that is the hard part of Sen's Fortress. Now we just need to avoid getting bombed. So, you want to run up here. And immediately make your way to the right and jump off this little ledge here. So this is a bonfire sense fortress. And uh, resting at this bonfire will reset the aggro on everything and just make it a lot better because now you don't have to run through all of Sense Fortress if you happen to dodge to the boss or anything like that. Hop off the ledge and then head back up and around. Now we're going to make our way up and through here. We want to make sure that we are going rather fast because there is a nice giant that is across the way throwing bombs at us. And 
definitely do not want to have the bombs thrown at us. I'm just gonna go ahead and run here, following the path around. Make our way to the left here. And up and around. There is a nice crossbowman here. Uh, he just needs to be hit one time so that he can get out of the way and not have to kill him. So we're going to go through this boss bar. And we just want to pretty much run straight across. If you are just off to the side here a little bit, his little air blast will hit that little rock thing there. You just want to kind of walk past him and hit his leg a couple times. Oh no! Gravity! Ah! So this is why you save. So if you want to stop the boulder throwing guy, you can go up there and make the arena a little bit bigger, but... Unnecessary. Have him back up and come a little bit farther down here. Alright, he's starting to stagger. When he's starting to stagger, you want to hit him more. There you go, he takes the tumble off. So is that like six attacks or something? So after you've killed the iron golem, this guy stops throwing rocks at you and you can move over here and grab this ring of light. Now it's going to take you here to Honor Londo, the city of the gods. We have quite a number of souls at our disposal, and we're going to have even more once we crack the Gullum soul. And we're going to make use of them to level our character up a little bit more. At this point, um, I'm going to see how uh, see if we can equip some armor, which I think we might be able to equip like one piece of armor and still have. Ooh. Oh, we still have. Okay. So we are getting to the point where we need to have a little bit of endurance in order to wear the heavier stuff, which is fine. Or an iron golem. Let's go ahead and level up our endurance to 18 and then see how our rolling goes. We're still fat rolling. We're still fat rolling. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just take off the arms. There we go. Perfect. So it's just important that you want to have a fast roll for most of the time because the fast roll is just really, really good for dodging enemy attacks. But now that we have a bit of endurance, we have some armor to negate some damage in addition to the Ring of Steel protection. Plus, once you get all of this whole set equipped, you look like a ring wraith, especially with the sword. So um, I personally am a, a fan. So we're going to make our way down here. There's a jumping section that you can kind of like jump over the railing but uh, for, for the sake of simplicity we're just going to come down here there is a gargoyle there and that gargoyle will wreck you he is stronger than the gargoyle boss fight um, as just a regular mob and this area with especially with the pillars and stuff will try and um, make you fall but you know we want to make sure that we climb up here Get this gentleman here kill this gentleman as well All right, so up here is a little, a little tense. This up here is a, is a, I'm going to call it a platforming section. There's no jumping, but it is um, a section that you have to navigate without falling off. So, so these guys have uh, an interesting AI where they want to walk directly at you as much as possible. And so you can sort of manipulate that to some extent. But. Ow. 
Oh, no, 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 God. Oh, of course gravity was going to get me. All right. We're just going to stand here for a second, let that guy die. And then make my way over. There's another way to jump onto this, like, area here, but... Um, so, now that we're down here, we're going to make our way through this boss fog... Or this boss fog... This fog gate. And onto this platform. We're going to spin this... Uh, spin this platform up. And hopefully we will just... Or actually, I think it actually spins down. We are going to avoid getting murdered by this gargoyle. Here we go this way. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna make our way to the right here, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm full HP. This this area and this kind of like pathway is renowned for being very difficult to maneuver through. You're enjoying the guide? Oh, I appreciate that. Um, I plan on throwing this this up on the YouTubes as well, so if you're... Oh, oh God. Alright, so we want to make sure that we go down here. I plan on throwing this up on the YouTube, so if you're watching live, you can catch the rest of it on the YouTubes very soon. So we want to make, make our way through here. We want to make our way through here and up this way. We want to make sure that we aren't getting lightning bolted by those guys. Um... But usually, we can get up here and sort of corner the lightning bolt. Now that we are up here, this archer guy is going to continue to shoot arrows at us. We want to make sure that we dodge the arrows. And two hits should kill him. Make our way around the edge and down here. Excellent! Hell yeah. <laughs> there you go. So as soon as we make it through the boss fog and we head down this way, we can go ahead and hit this bonfire. This bonfire is mostly for safety purposes in case we die to ONS, which is, you know, considered to be one of the harder fights of this run. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill this knight just so that he doesn't chase after me while I explain this... Uh, while I explain this jumping action. Oh. Ow. Yeah. Hopefully I don't need that flask later. So, as you're going up here, you're going to notice there's this railing that has this hallway that goes like this with a T. You kind of want to go above it, and then run towards it and jump, and jump over. So you're going to Run at it and double tap B so you hop over the railing. And that's going to put you almost right at Ones. We're going to come down here. Wrap around this corner. And avoid these big old night guys. Avoid getting shot by the arrows. And we're going to make our way into Ones. Now, Ones is the proper two, two enemy boss fight. You got. Um, you got big, tanky, heavy guy. You got smaller, also tanky for some reason, fast guy. Um, we're going to try and kill Ornstein first. Uh, Ornstein is currently doing his glitch dash. Ow. So, the objective of this fight is to not fight both of them simultaneously. You want to get Smog sort of caught up on the ledge and then fight Ornstein sort of by himself. Oh, oh that is a hammer. My eyes. Oh god. I didn't see that he had, he had moved there. So you want to make use of these pillars to split them up. 
Pillars can also block the lightning. He's going to do a super dash and get caught on every object, so it doesn't look like he's dashing. You just want to properly manage the aggro on both of these guys at the same time. It can be a little tricky at first, but just don't get greedy. You do a lot of damage. It doesn't take that many hits to kill this time, Ernestine. But you want to focus all your damage on one or the other. I'm focusing on Ornstein for this particular attempt. Whichever one you don't kill. Um, ow. Whichever one you don't kill is the one that is going to... Uh, transform at the end of the fight. Right. You just gotta be patient. And a lot of time trying to heal is what's gonna actually get you. And just not respecting Smo. But you don't you don't want to split your damage between them. Doing any damage to the other one is really not going to be productive at, at all. You want to focus all your damage on one or the other. Yeah. I'm used to Black Knight Halberd having the longer distance, which is really nice. Like I said, you just kind of want to respect them. It almost doesn't really require any dodging. I mean, maybe a little bit. But... But it's mostly about positioning correctly. Alright. Excellent. Alright. So this is a similar similar situation. You're gonna keep him on the pillars. And you just wanna hit him one time, back away. Um, a lot of his attacks you can you can dodge into him or through the attacks, but um, if he does his butt slam, you wanna make sure that you are as far away from him as you can get. And the reason you want to stay sort of close to the pillars is if you stay sort of close to the pillars, then he won't um, he won't be able to get you with his charge attack. He'll get stuck on the pillar there. Dodging time. Damn. Okay. Well, well, we'll, we'll get him the second time. So, Ornstein usually does that dash uh, to open the fight up, and he can get caught on objects and stuff. you up a little bit.
being locked on during this fight really does hinder your movement. You want to be as free to move as you possibly can. Because, and you want to try and keep both of them in your line of sight if you possibly can. That secret, secret special dash there. want to make sure that you, you keep them separated. He's going to do two. Sometimes he does three. Sometimes he doesn't. Now it is important that even if you kill him, you have to survive. You have to survive killing him until he actually transitions. So, Smo can and will murder you. Oh god. Smo can and will murder you even after you've killed Ornstein. Lord. Wow, only charge attacks, huh? are a full heal, which are really nice. Oh, I thought he was doing his jump. That attack is brutal. That will probably one-shot most characters. And it's pretty quick. You need two dodge rolls to get away from him if you're in melee range to avoid that attack. And he can do it multiple times. And you can walk into the residual lightning effect, so... This would be an awkward time for him to do a charge. Just use that pillar to space out his charge. Most of his attacks he can actually be dodged into, as long as you time it correctly. So that's your opportunity to really get the hits in. Um, the His little charge attack, though, you really can't. Thank the Lord. So that's Ornstein and Smo. Not too bad. You just have to be patient. And now we are going to go and uh, and get the Lord Vessel, which is incredibly important for us being able to move around. We also have the option of going and buying a lot of Twinkling Titanite and just upgrading our weapon to full from the Black Knight, uh, from the from the blacksmith in here, the giant blacksmith. But I think we are going to do... I mean, there's plenty of Twinkling Titanite that just shows up naturally. So, All right, let's go talk to uh, this nice lady and, and get her to uh, give us the Lord Vessel. Oh, I need to kneel, I'm sorry. Now, you can skip this. Uh, you can skip this whole scene right here if you just kill her. And the split. And by kill her, I mean just shoot her with an arrow. She's an illusion. She's not real anyway, so dispelling the illusion dispels the entire illusion of Honor Londo in general. So very interesting there. Nice indeed. So now that we have 
that. Um, so I could continue to increase our weapon damage, but we're going to get a lot more out of our weapon damage um, by, um, by using upgrade material. So now that we now that we have the Lord vessel, we can use the warp ability, which is incredibly incredibly nice to be able to do. I think I am gonna go pay a visit to the Black Knight, uh, or not the Black Knight, the giant blacksmith, um, and hopefully we don't die and lose these seventy thousand souls. So you make your way out of the boss arena. And we're going to kind of make our way out of the arena and to the right here, up the stairs. Now, there is a black, uh, a silver knight with a bow that is up here. And you can dispatch him pretty easily. It takes three hits, I think. And that way, he just gets out of your way. And you don't have to worry about him shooting at you. And coming up here, there's a little pathway to the right. And down this whole area is the giant blacksmith. Now, killing the giant blacksmith will give you uh, his hammer, which is a pretty awesome weapon, especially for low-level runs, like soul level one run. But you can talk to him. He will reinforce your weapon. You can reinforce Black Knight sword. You can go ahead and purchase items. He has Twinkling Tight Knight. You can buy several Twinkling Tight Knights from him. I think I can buy up to eight. I'm going to buy four, though. Oh, not reinforce. Reinforce weapon. And upgrade this two more times. All right. So if I want to buy four more, I can. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave this as it as it is. And go ahead and homework them. And once we're at the bonfire... So that gives us a plus four sword. This sword only upgrades to plus five. Um, so utilize the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and continue to level up my endurance so that I can um, continue to put uh, pieces of armor on because we like armor. Now we have that, which is nice. We're going to go warp to Firelink Shrine, place the Lord Vessel. E. So this guy, I hate him. He's stupid. He's annoying. We're just going to fall. All right. Firelink Altar. We're going to go ahead. We're going to place the Lord Vessel. Resting at the Lord Vessel is fine. We're going to warp. And we're going to warp the inner lock. We're going to rest at the inner lock of the bonfire so that we lock ourselves into that spot. Now we can make our way this way. Now, if you kill Guinevere, it dispels the illusion of Honor Londo, and it makes all of these guards go away because these guards are not real. They're part of the illusion. So a lot of people will elect to do that just because it makes getting through this area a little bit easier because you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, manipulate these guys to attack you in the right time or anything like that. So now that the Lord Vessel has been placed, you can come up here before you get the Lord Vessel. However, this door is going to be blocked by a golden light. And it will not be removed until you place the Lord Vessel. So we're going to go through here. We are going to try to not get got by this guy. Usually pretty easy to just do a little dodge action. Just gonna try and walk around this guy here. Now you can see that because there are enemies around, you're not gonna be able to um, sit at that bonfire, but that should not be necessary. Hopefully, we'll just make this run through the first time and it's not gonna be an issue. So, I like having my shield up just so I have a little bit of extra defenses. These guys hit really freaking hard, so. Um, you just want to make sure that you are avoiding and sidestepping the arrows. And we're going to kind of make our way over here to the left and avoid as much of these like projectiles and archers as we possibly can. Ultimately, we do want to make our way up in the stairwell. And it is important that you kind of uh, 
kind of let that guy come down and swing at you because if not, he will block your path and it will be bad. I'm gonna come up here, go ahead and top ourselves off. And there is a crystal, uh, a crystal armor and weapon equipped gentleman in this hallway here that we will need to dispatch or kite out of the hallway before, before he will let us through. He did try and parry us. I do think he can parry us. So if you recall, if you use your memory, we need four Twinkling Titanite to upgrade our weapon. So there is a lizard right here. And there are two more Twinkling Titanite for our upgrades. So we just need two more to get our weapon maxed out. Pop through this boss arena here. And it is incredibly important that you hang around back here by the door. Uh, you want to walk up and kind of like aggro the boss, but it is important that you do not get hit by his breath attack. He's going to do an explosion. And this is when you want to get hit by him. His breath attacks give a status called Cursed. And if you get cursed, it's half your maximum. So it's very important that you stick back close to the door so that you don't get hit with the, the curse status. Trust me when I say being cursed is a nightmare. So we have killed this gentleman. He has dropped a key. And now we can exit this tower cell. And now we go a little Lovecraft. There are going to be these creatures that are going to chase after us. These, uh, these guys are going to be fleeing. Um, there's no real reason for me to kill them, but... I guess, I guess it's just e easy to do, so... There are going to be guys that are coming up here. These guys do a lot of damage. Um, but they are relatively fragile. They die in one hit, so... And there are a bunch of them. You just want to make sure you kill them as you're walking through. They are worth a fair bit of experience, so I mean, like, it's not nothing to kill them, but you just don't want to get greedy and accidentally have them murder you. So there are three snake guys up here. There are two melee snake guys and one lightning snake guy. You want to make sure that you kind of pull the lightning... Oh, the lightning snake guys. You want to kind of pull up. And you need to open this chest. And collect the item inside. You don't care if you die. Dying is perfectly fine just want to get this archive tower giant door key which is quite a name for a key I don't know why it needs to be called archive tower giant door key but here we are so this actually makes it a little easier because you end up back at the top anyways so dying actually ends up making it a little bit faster and you want to take this egregiously tall ladder up So the archives has have a series of ladder or staircases in it that rotate on both sides. You are trying to make it so that you rotate the staircases in the right direction in the right order. So we're gonna make a left here and we're gonna come up the staircase and head out to the right here. And there's a caster right here that we're going to try and kill. You should get staggered by the first hit and die to the second. We want to make our way this way. So this is the first staircase. We want to swivel the staircase around. These levers swivel the staircase on both sides of the room. So that is going to put us here. And as we come down this hallway, you just kind of want to sidestep the arrows that are coming at you. Okay. 
So we're going to drop off the ledge here. Important to avoid not getting hit by the arrows. Important to avoid not getting hit by the magic. You are invulnerable to damage while the uh, while the staircase is spinning, and you do want to go down. There is a gentleman here going to shoot arrows at you, but you're just going to ride this ladder down all the way to the bottom. Big old ladder. You definitely don't want to jump down. That's that's definitely wrong. And grab that little secret passage. Right out here is our bonfire. And we can go ahead and rest it. Now this next section is a little frustrating for some people because it involves invisible floors. However, uh, that thankfully FromSoft put good ways of detecting the invisible floors. So we're gonna go ahead and have the staircase go down. Head out this fog gate and make our way down into the crystal caverns. Are they called crystal caverns? They're gonna be these big golems. You really just want to stay away from them. Uh, they can metamorphosize their body into different kinds of weapons that um, that make them especially deadly. They have a bunch of jump attacks, and uh, while we do. A fair bit of damage. They are a little tanky. Crystal cave. There we go. Not crystal caverns. Almost. Almost, though. Now, as threatening as the enemies are, the ca the caves, they, you're more apt to fall than you are to die to the enemies. So you can see how there's, like, little ice crystals falling down and showing you the invisible floor here. Everywhere there is an invisible floor, you can see where the invisible floor is with the ice crystals. We're going to sort of make our way down here. You can also, if you're in online mode, you can also see where the floors are. You can see how it's kind of like a straight shot all the way across here. Where the ice crystals are. And you want to make your way across here, but note that because this is sort of like an ice slippery slide, no, 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 don't fall off ledge, thank you. <laughs> now we're gonna drop down here and immediately turn around into this cave and we're gonna try and get as many of these guys as we can. Each of those guys drop Twinkling Titanite and that's usually where you get the upgrade materials uh, to upgrade your weapon without having to buy them. So this right here, straight shot all the way, uh, all the way across to sort of that direction you can see where the um, you can see where the floor resides by where the the frost is so even if you um, even if you get kind of lost you can you can see where the where the the frozen floor is so kind of straight across here now inside here are a bunch of uh, clams <laughs> demonic clams and if you want you can clear these guys out but um, but it's not really necessary to clear them out. It is possible for them to sneak into the boss arena with you. So um, you do want to you do want to kind of hustle through here if you can, uh, because if they follow you into the boss arena, then you have to fight them too. So as soon as the boss fight starts, you want to turn around and break this. If you don't break that, Seath is immortal. So he will kind of show. Oh god. Oh no 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 no! Oh god! <laughs> he will kind of show you with his head where he is blasting. And usually he will do close range blast and then long range blast. He also has a. Uh, he also has a move where he explodes. You want to watch out for that. Um, he will gather enemy energy at his chest. But usually it's more of a uh, walk inwards, walk out. Not 
want him to get uh, too close to you because uh, you need to be able to run away from him when he does the oh god oh lord hey welcome on in perfect timing big old octopus dragon boss welcome on in raiders have this. Get him with a few attacks here. Let's see if this goes. Oh. Here's that one HP. <laughs> Here's that one HP. Alright. And let's see if this scale is. So, we're gonna get a bunch of humanity and we're gonna get this bonfire and we're gonna teleport. And now I'm gonna talk to, talk to the so now that we have beaten Seat the Scaleless, um, I'm not going to immediately level up because it is important that I have um, I have um, some amount of uh, souls for leveling up and purchasing an item from Andre. So, so we're going to teleport to the Undead Pairs so that we can go to Andre. And first things first, we're going to talk to him and he's going to reinforce our Black Knight Halberds. Then we are going to purchase an item. Oh, not Titanite Knight shards. We're going to purchase the Crest of Artorias from him. Don't get yourself neither. And now we are going to kill him. You got some nerve. Now, uh, this gentleman is angry, and he does a lot of damage. So if he uh, uh, if he gets his hands on you, it's pretty bad. So why do we kill him? Well, he has three humanity. And we really like humanity. So we're gonna go ahead and level up. I wanna I wanna get to 18 or 16 vitality, I guess, and we can go to 24 endurance. Those are probably some pretty good numbers. And now we're gonna make our way to the saddest fight of the game. We're gonna go fight Sith. So you just wanna make sure that you kind of duck out and around of this guy. He has a super huge range with his weapons, so just give him a wide berth and respect him, just like most of the enemies, I would say, in Dark Souls games. You should respect the enemies that are around you. Respect the enemies that are around you. They will kill you. Even if you are very strong, they will kill you. So we have almost our entire setup now. We have a maxed out Black Knight weapon. We have plenty of good stats for it. We have armor on, uh, which means we have a pretty healthy stamina bar. We can um, we we can fast roll while we're doing all of this. It's very 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 productive. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch this door. I just don't want them chasing me. So if you want a bonus uh, bonfire, there's a secret door right here and a bonfire right here. I'm going to sit at it because if you do not sit at the bonfires, it does not mark, uh, mark as a checkpoint. So we're just going to grab that in case Sif manages to kill us. Uh, the Sif fight is a little harder with the shorter weapon because he's a tall boy. But hopefully we won't have a problem with him. Drew, welcome on in. Um, I am going to make my way through these guys running past them. We are also going to run past this cat. And we are going to make our way up and around here. Right. So there's going to be a gentleman that comes over here. So it is important that we grab the armor from that chest. Essentially, as soon as you pop out of the ruins, you hop around the edge there. And then once you do that, there is a glowing door that we're going to make a beeline for. Now, there is a very loyal pupper on the other side of this door. 
and Sif is very loyal to another boss that is in the game, Artorias, who was supposedly heralded as the guy that went and defeated the Abyss, the Lord of the Abyss, Manus. However, in actuality, he ended up getting corrupted by the Abyss, or the Lord of the Abyss, and uh, succumbed to his will and became a bad guy. That's all DLC content. So, in order to uh, traverse the Abyss, we need to get a ring that Sif has um, and is, is protecting. So, we are going to first make our way to the opposite side of this gravestone. And now, we are going to summon old now. So, I personally like doing this fight unlocked. It's usually a lot easier. Usually. And I would much prefer it if Sif didn't jump all the time. That would be... Must you be this way? So this fight is a lot less about um, dodging the actual sword blows and more about where you're positioned. Because if you're underneath of Sif, um, she really can't hit you. So. You'd much prefer it if Sif was not a cute dog with a sword. Me too. So now that we've killed Sif and we have obtained the Crest of Artorias, we now can go and do honor, um, new Wanda and the Four Kings. Uh, so leveling up, um, we can certainly give ourselves more damage if we want. We're already doing a pretty significant amount of damage, so more strength really isn't going to do a whole lot. I'd much rather just give us a little bit more survivability, so give us a little bit more HP. I don't know why I didn't just work. Right, so, going back to Firelink Shrine. We are going to head down into New Londo. Oh, very important that we sit at Firelink Shrine once again, reminding everybody that sitting at bonfires is what causes them to um, save as a checkpoint. If you if you warp to them, you will not be saved as a checkpoint. You will get teleported to wherever your original bonfire was, and it will just take extra time because you'll have to warp. Now, we left the elevator up. But we are essentially going to be doing a boss run, a run to a boss fight from here. So in case we die, I'm going to go ahead and send this back up. All right. New Londo Ruins. Now we're going to actually progress into the ruins. And uh, progressing into the ruins is going to involve doing a quit out. Uh, we are going to be running through here, and the first order of business is New Londo is flooded. And you can see it's full of water, and we need access to the depths that are down there. So um, another problem with New Londo is that it is full of ghosts, and, um, well, ghosts are immune to the physical realm. So if you're not cursed in some way, you can't damage ghosts. So... Since we can't damage them, we're just going to run past them all. So this ghost is going to block your way. You have to kind of like bait it to come in a little bit. And then I'm pop out here, head directly right, and through this far. So you can see that the ghosts chase you to Kingdom Come. They're very annoying. But we are going to go ahead and quit out when we get over here. Now, why do we do this? Once again, it's just reset the it's reset the enemy aggro so that we don't have a bunch of ghosts chasing after us. And our goal is to go talk to that gentleman up there and get a key that he has. 
Now, you can kill him utilizing, like, firebombs and stuff. Uh, but I'm not going to murder that gentleman. He, he hasn't really done anything wrong, so I'm going to hop out here and make our way through here. And up this ladder. And we're going to try and race to the top before he murders us, or these guys murder us through the walls. Because ghosts can move through walls. They're so nice like that. Now that we have the key to the seal, we can go ahead and heal. Put out one more time to reset the ghost aggro. And we will head down the ladder and out to drain the water. As I said before, these ghosts can and will traverse through the walls. So, um, even though it looks like the ghosts are not very close to me, they can just phase right through these walls and get to you very quickly. So, important to jump over that gap, run around the edge of the castle and emb embarkments here. And our goal is this door, which we need the key for, and to flip the switch. We're just going to open this big set of doors and drain the water. Pretty cool, actually. Um, and this takes us back to one of the original areas at the start. Or allows us access to the lower area through another area that we had access to at the beginning of the game. So, right there with all the drakes. So, Valley of the Drakes connects into here. Pretty easy and some Oh. So we had a ghost that was just waiting to come murder us in the middle of that cutscene. Is it an embarkman in Sin and Bacon? I have no. I have no idea. I probably used the wrong word. I'm not I'm not a language major. I barely speak English. Oh god. So all of these guys are gonna try and murder us. But we're gonna hop off of here. Make our way down this narrow stretch and through this fog gate, and hopefully these uh, ghosts will let us let us be. So we want to make sure that we heal up. Um, don't necessarily need to be healed to full, but we need to take this ring of steel protection off and equip the covenant of Artorius. Because if we don't equip the covenant of Artorius, well, it is going to be bad for us when we try and traverse the abyss here. We're gonna. Oh. gravity how does it work so uh explaining the four kings a little bit so the four kings spawn one at a time there can be up to f up to five or six kings that actually are spawned uh, but the reason that they are called four kings is essentially each king has about a quarter of the total health pool of the four kings boss health bar and after killing approximately four of them you you will beat beat the boss fight but it is a dps check you are trying to kill the boss bef uh, before you are overwhelmed with boss spawns because even if you uh even if you don't like if you don't kill the boss it will continuously spawn more and more kings until you have defeated the boss so um, you can kill each individual one but like i said it's about a quarter of the full health bar of the boss so you have to be pretty diligent to kill them before the next one spawns, uh, and that can be that can be challenging, especially if you aren't doing a lot of damage. However, you know we already have a maxed out weapon, so we should be okay for the most part, <laughs> as far as the the damage check goes. heal so usually just spin around to see if you can find them hopefully he does not do a magic attack so I'm just gonna tank this oh shit so that grab attack is brutal
So important to note, you can over damage each of the bosses. You don't actually have to fight four kings, you can actually fight like three kings. Or three and a half kings or whatever. Like, we killed that one pretty fast and so I'm waiting for the next king to spawn. another boss that you can sidestep a lot of attacks that you don't actually have to roll. So last king. He's just got a smidgen of health bar left, so... Easy. So now that we've killed them, we get four humanity for killing them, which is a ton of humanity. We also get 60,000 experience, which is not nothing. But we are now going to warp to the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire. So this was the whole reason that we picked up the Daughter of Chaos Bonfire earlier through the, the secret area, because we didn't want to have to... Uh, uh, didn't want to have to run all the way down here. So now we just need to get to 26 humanity because we've already turned in four humanity. So use item. Uh, we have nine. 26 humanity. Talk to this lady. Go ahead and give humanity. Yes. 26. Yes. All right. And then she's going to say our covenant has deepened and give give us the pyromancer storm but more important we are going to gain access to the the secret passage. All right. So I'm go ahead and add some endurance to our character. Hopefully we can have the good hand. Go. And Take off Crest of Artorius, put on Ring of Superdiction. Beautiful. Awesome. So we're going to make our way to the right here, and we're going to progress through this area. This area is very scary in a casual playthrough. This area is full of bosses that or full of previously boss mobs. Now, we didn't fight any of these boss mobs, during this playthrough, but those little demon guys over there are actually really big when you get close to them. Those are all Taurus demons. And that is usually the first the first boss after the starter boss that most people encounter. Usually they uh, usually they do not go straight to the gargoyles. As you can see, they are very big. So, this is also a boss. This is usually the like second or third boss. Thing. This is usually like the second or third boss that somebody might encounter. But. Thankfully, we're a badass, but you can kill him in two hits. Now, it is incredibly important to note that there's like a little hole right there, and it is there specifically to catch you. Don't, don't be like me and fall into that hole. We are going to kind of hug the left side here, and as we get to kind of this bottom area here, we're going to jump off of this onto this little platform. And we 
to bait the little worm to attack. Now, it does a lot of damage, so you really don't want to get hit by it. This guy is blocking our bonfire. Oh, that. oh, that was actually good. Okay. So this is the bonfire that we will be using for this area. Unfortunately, if, if you die, it's a, it's a bit of a long run. So just don't die. Easy peasy. Gate is a boss, but we are not going to be taking the fog gate. We're actually going to be taking this side path here where there's this sort of like vine that's growing through the floor here. We're going to be taking this down and making our way through here. Noted, don't die. Exactly. Perfect strats. So, we're going to touch this door. And because we got our covenant upgraded, it is going to open for us from this side. Normally you would open it from the other side. So we want to kill these things. Because one of them has a sun-like maggot. That's going to come into play later. Um, and if for some reason you have not fully upgraded your Black Knight weapon, and you can actually hit that. It that has a uh, that has more twinkling titanite. Now, you kind of want to piss off this guy, and you want to go with his rotation and run past him. Um, he will sling lightning at you, so you kind of want to dodge to one side, dodge the other side to ensure you don't get hit by lightning. Are we saving Solaire? We did not do his story, so he's not available to really save. But by killing that Sunlight Maggot, effectively we have, we have saved him. So coming up here, there is a Pyromancer here. We are going to kill this Pyromancer dead because he is uh, wearing our outfit and he is an imposter. All right, this boss fight is a little weird, so let me explain what is gonna go on here. So we wanna equip our bow and arrows for this boss fight because this boss fight is a puzzle boss fight. This boss fight is a puzzle boss fight. This boss fight dies to three hits. It only has three HP. Anything, including a punch, can, can can kill it. But you can see that there are kind of two glowing red balls on either side of this boss. And that is essentially what we are going to be trying to do. So you want to go to the one side, the right side to start with. You want to bait him to... You want to bait him to swing his hand. As soon as he slams his hand on the ground, you want to run close here. You can actually just jump and roll through. And you can see that there's like a, like you can even roll into the, the thing. There's a little red strand there. You break it. And now the boss is even more pissed. So we're going to do a weird thing and quit out. So this boss remembers when you've destroyed parts of it. This boss remembers that you kill certain sections of it. So, by quitting out, it puts us outside the boss arena. So, we go back to the start. And it hel it helps us because as you break 
the three sections of the boss that you need to break, the floor becomes brittle and starts falling out from under you. So, it is incredibly important that we don't need to navigate around. We want to sit right here in this corner. shoot our arrows right there at the at the little spot if I can actually hit it arrows hopefully you hit it <laughs> and now that two of them are destroyed you can unequip your bow and we're going fist only quit out one more time one HP indeed so we'll be back top of the boss arena I'm gonna heal up to full and we're going to be going through here. It is important on this third attempt that when you cross the boss fog, you immediately go down. Because the boss is going to do a move that is kind of on a timer. It's going to do it every so often. I guess maybe not. I guess the boss will wait for us. There it is. So you need to bait him to sweep the hands. Run straight up the middle. <gasps> no! He hit me with his elbow. So you want to bait his hands to kind of go like this and then run straight up the middle. Through the boss fog. Maybe it'll do the explodey bit now? No? Maybe not? Guess, guess the answer is no, it won't. I'm gonna wait until I get in the boss arena before it does it. No. So, you have to walk up and bathe the arms. You have to bathe not, not only the arms, but you have to bathe the double swing. No arms, good. So once you make it across, you have to kill this little bug. And that's the whole boss, is that little bug. Alright. So now to equip the sunlight maggot. So the sunlight maggot is this nice little helmet that uh, glows very brightly. And why is why that is important is because why that is important is because we are about to go into a very very dark area. We are going to return to Firelink Shrine. We are going to return to Firelink Shrine. We're going to make sure we rest at Firelink Shrine. And we are going to make our way into the graveyard. The catacombs. The area that I said was particularly scary at the beginning. Sorry, fool. Enough. So that guy is annoying. He's like, oh, I know you've killed all of these lord or you've, uh, you've almost filled the Lord Vessel with all of the Lord Souls, but you still suck. Okay. 
Do you want to hang kind of the left of the graveyard and go down these stairs? Keep in mind that this area can be very dark, um, but this area is uh, has a gimmick to itself as well. This, this area has necromancers, and if you don't kill the necromancers, a lot of the enemies in this area will just continue to respawn over and over again until the necromancers die. The necromancers do have a chance of dropping a special lantern. However, it is uh, it is rare for them to drop one unless you have killed all of them. The last one. Oh, I need to actually sit it. The last one guarantees that it will drop the lantern. So I think there's like seven or eight of them in total. Um, and they're kind of a pain in the butt to, to go and grab. So we are just going to skip that. In, f in fact, we are going to use gravity to our advantage. And... Okay, we're, we're going to need some HP. We're going to need some HP. So these guys are not going to be st staying dead for long. Jump off this ledge. Go up. Jump off this ledge. Gonna grab this. And jump off one more ledge before we heal. Alright. So it is incredibly important that we continue to run through this cave and avoid those bone wheels as much as possible. If they catch you, they hit you a lot, and they will kill you very quickly. If it is possible. So this is the hardest boss of the game, by far, Pinwheel. He, uh, he is somebody that you can come to very, very early, and he can just wreck the entire world. He creates copies of himself, he shoots a bunch of fire, in general, he's very annoying. Maybe not the hardest boss of all time. So killing Pinwheel gives you an item called the Rite of Kindling. Um, and that lets you kindle bonfires to higher numbers so you can have more Estus Flasks. So this is specifically the area that we are wanting to have this light source for because if we take off this light source, you can see it is incredibly dark in this area. Very, very difficult to see. So um, there are a lot of places where you can fall and we are gonna be navigating through this area. So first we're going to go down this. We are going to run right past this gentleman and make our way down going to go down one. We're going to go down two. We're going to make our way past both of these skeletons. We're going to go down a third one. We're going to make our way to the left here and down this ladder and over to this bonfire. Pretty simple and straightforward. But if you do not know that path, and you do not have a light, it can be very tricky to navigate through there to get to safety, especially if you don't know that that bonfire is down there. This is Patches. He's a jerk. So the reason he has four humanity on him is because he has murdered a bunch of people and they are down in the pit. So we're going to make our way this way towards this fog, and we're going to be navigating through this section as well, just mostly running. We're going to make our way down into the middle here. We want to drop down into these like holes, make our way to the left after we have dropped down into the holes, and go on down, and to the left, and continuing on down into the left. So this will be our bonfire. Now, you can rest at this bonfire, but um, 
I had enough level, uh, enough experience to level up. Uh, but what I will say is that the Black Knight that is up there sometimes will chase you down here, and resting at the bonfire will not reset him. So, so we're going to come back up and go down this like side path here and hang to the left here. There's going to be a few enemies that we are going to run past, but for the most part we are going to hang to the right, and we are going to go down, and we are going to drop in this hole. And we are going to just pretty much follow this path all the way to the boss of this area. Now, if you are human, you will be invaded here, and it can be a little awkward. Um, I will say that it is easier to see over here, but oh, go around the little bone pillars. All of these guys you can pretty easily run past. You just want to make sure that this giant arrow doesn't hit you, the giant skeleton's arrow doesn't hit you. All right. So when you get to this area, you want to run down here, and right here where all these bones are, you want to pop off and over to this area. You want to run up, and navigate your way through the boss fight. kind of like dip over to the side. So at this point, we are going to go full tanky. Remember the stone armor that we picked up earlier? Well, we are going to be full stone armored. We are going to be chonky boy with a big fat roll, but it's not going to matter. So we are going to have Nito come to us little bit. So pretty much we are just going up to Nito and we are attacking him. And there's not much else that we're really doing. We're just sitting here recharging our stamina, healing. Um, we just want to tank through everything. Even big even the big explodey hits. We just want to sit here and smack him. When you run out of stamina, you want to heal. Heal, heal. He's going to do it again. Okay. That's it. Um, you just sit on top of him and smack him. Easy. And that concludes the gathering of our Lord Souls. Um, we're going to go ahead... Oh, I didn't pick up the mask. Oh, Pinwheel drops a mask. Uh, there are four masks that Pinwheel can drop, and I guess I forgot to pick it up. Uh, but all of them are pretty good helms because they have some stat that they give you. They either give you extra HP, extra stamina, or um, extra HP, stamina regeneration, or something else. I don't remember what the last one is. All right, we're just gonna give ourselves more strength. And we are going to warp to uh, uh, I guess I'll warp to fire launch. So we have now gotten all the Lord Souls, and the last the last boss that we have is to go fight Gwen. We are going to drop down in here. And we are going to give the Lord Vessel all the souls that we owe it. Offer souls to the Lord Vessel. Now, because the Lord Vessel is supercharged with all of these souls, the door will open, and resting here will cause us to have 20 Estus Flasks. So, uh, we are going to trade out our Ring of Steel Protection for the Hornet Ring, because we are hopefully going to be doing some parrying here. So, this area is very interesting, because Black Knights are uh, only... They don't respawn. They're one of the few enemies in the game that doesn't don't respawn. But the Black Knights that are in the kiln do. 
So the Black Knights have a chance to drop their Black Knight weapons, their um, shields, all kinds of stuff. And Tight Knight of different varieties. Because these Black Knights respawn, that means you can farm them. So you can actually get the Black Knight Axe, the Black Knight Albert, the Black Knight Great Sword, Black Knight Sword, Black Knight Shield. Um, if you did not get get them off of one of the other ones. So that is pretty cool. I'm glad that they added that because uh, if you wanted to say, you know, have a bunch of Black Knight weapons as part of your um, equipment load for another playthrough. Boom. 1,000 damage. So uh, I didn't mention exactly, but we equipped the Hornet Ring. And what the Hornet Ring does is it increases your critical damage um, for like reposts and backstabs. So because we are going to be parrying Lord Gwyn, we want to have that extra damage, so it takes us less time parrying him. Um, he's one of the only bosses... Uh, he might actually be the only boss in the game that you can actually parry. Which is very unique. So, go through the fog gate. And hopefully I don't mess it up. can't parry any others. Yeah, this is the only boss in the game that you that you can parry. Always missed that first one, but that's him. That's uh, that's Lord Gwyn. Parry specialty. So, um, parrying him, he has his overhand strike is kind of a, a slow and a long one. So you have uh, a couple different versions, but at this point we can kind of tank a hit. So you can always parry the second strike, which is very consistent. But that is Dark Souls one. Um. That's Dark Souls 1, all of the base game, pretty much. There are a few bosses that we skipped, especially at the beginning. A few bosses that we skipped kind of at the end, but I mean, that's like every boss, uh, every one of the main bosses. Um, not the DLC, but, you know, I a pretty straightforward shot through Dark Souls 1. Uh, if you've, you know, if you're interested in trying to do kind of like a quicker playthrough. So, just, uh, just to sate my curiosity, I want to know exactly how long that run took us um and we can go to load game and tester two hours 26 minutes 27 seconds so under three hours uh, we died a lot um obviously you can go a lot faster than that but um it seems it seems like two and a half hours is about my average time when i'm going through and doing these different runs um maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit <laughs> Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Two hours, five minutes or so. Um, but this was with a bunch of... Oh, this one was an hour, 53 minutes, under two hours. Uh, but, like I said, uh, there wasn't anything really complicated that I did during the course of this run. I think that anybody can really do this run in this way. Um, and even if you didn't want to just straight go from boss fight to boss fight to boss fight at least the beginning setup of obtaining a black knight weapon and and uh killing the first few bosses with it um uh, uh killing the first few bosses with uh with your black knight weapon is certainly just 
uh, set your char character up for success. You you can get uh, you get a bunch of damage. You get some amount of tankiness. Uh, you 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 have the ability to then go and explore whatever areas you want. Level up as much as you want. This is about level 60. Uh, we, we ended at level 60 at the end of this adventure. Um, you can certainly go higher, but you can see that most of my playthroughs going through and utilizing a similar setup to this are going to be about 60 minutes. Or, I'm sorry, about about level 60. Take about two and a half hours. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them that you want. And if you want me to... Uh, do any kind of specific playthroughs or challenges or anything else, please suggest videos in the comments. I'm more than happy to oblige. I love playing the Dark Souls games, and I love sharing my knowledge with everybody, and I want people to enjoy these games as much as I enjoy them. So please uh, let, allow me to unlock the door, the, uh, the door of Dark Souls. Um, and if you don't think that you can play these games, that is how I felt the first time I played them. I didn't think I could play or beat Dark Souls, and uh, it, it is it is a lot more manageable than most people assume. So, thank you for watching. Subscribe, follow, like, comment, all that stuff, and I will see you in the next video.